So, how do these four areas of community health worker policy interact? First, let's say that the objective or purpose of the public policy is to expand employment of paid CHWs in public health, healthcare, and related fields, mainly for the benefit of improved health in underserved communities. Another way of saying this is to increase demand for the employment of CHWs among potential employers and payers. Now that we know what we want the policy to do, let's discuss how to get that policy made. There are two things that can make it easier or harder to move policy change forward. They're not part of the content of policy, but rather part of the policy process. First, increasing awareness and understanding of the paid CHW workforce among key stakeholders. We must not underestimate the number of decision makers and others who simply don't know about CHWs. They can't be helpful to the process of change, and they may even oppose it if they don't know what we're talking about. Second, involving CHWs in all important decisions. We can't imagine other professionals, like teachers or doctors, allowing others to determine the future of their profession, but some decision makers feel free to do that with CHWs. The history of most communities that CHWs come from is a history of disadvantage, disempowerment, and disenfranchisement. Leadership and self-determination by CHWs in decisions about CHWs is, in a way, modeling a process of transforming the communities that CHWs work with. To recap, the purpose of CHW policy is to expand employment of CHWs. When we create these policies, we want to ensure that we are making stakeholders aware of what the CHW workforce is all about. And we want to include CHWs in all important decisions being made. So what will our CHW policy be about? The four areas of policy, again, are sustainable financing, definitions and skills standards, workforce development, and research and data. So what area of public policy would you start with? It seems that most people hone right in on sustainable financing. For example, how can we get Medicaid or Medicare to pay for CHWs? Let's say that we start there. What's needed to move forward on that? Employers and payers need state and federal authorization. State governments and managed care organizations will want to know exactly who or what they're being asked to pay for. They'll want to know what CHWs do and what their qualifications are. They'll also want to know the evidence suggesting that it's cost-effective to finance these services. They will want assurances that enough qualified workers can be prepared to fill these positions. Will employers support these policies if they don't understand community health workers? Will nurses or social workers oppose them if they see these policies as shifting funding away from their positions? Taking another view, let's say you want to start with workforce development. You'd like to get the state or federal government to fund more training opportunities for CHWs. You may represent community or technical colleges or community-based training providers, or you will need them as allies in going after these policies. Colleges want to know whether there will be jobs out there. They'll also want to know what skills they should be training for. You want employers on your side, and you want CHWs to advocate with you on behalf of training that meets their needs. There are coalitions out there in several states who are starting with credentialing or certification as a way for the state government to officially recognize CHWs as an occupation. Getting support for the definition of a new occupation will certainly require stakeholder awareness and education. Creating meaningful definitions of work for the CHWs and what it takes to do that job will be impossible without CHW leadership and engagement. Whatever group works on these tasks will need research and data on what CHWs actually do in your state and on what other states have come up with. And sooner or later, someone will bring up the point that definitions and standards won't change anything unless employers have a strategy for sustainable financing. Does this mean you have to work on everything all at once? Well, in addition to being even more complicated, it takes a lot of people power to work on all these things at the same time. In some states, coalitions have organized into committees according to these areas of policy, but sometimes one committee will cover two of the policy areas, or the coalition will recognize that one area of policy will be the main focus of activity for a time, with the others working more slowly in the background. Now, with the basic understanding that everything is connected to everything else, let's turn to some of the key policy issues that states are grappling with in each of these areas.